Alex? All right, well, still to come. Most dense uh, across where the fires actually are, but we... Well, before we say goodnight, want to give you your wake up. Well, coming up tonight on... Hi, everyone. We're not astronauts. No. Merely meteorologists. Right. But hopefully that counts for something. Glad yeah. you're with us. This is Weather Underground, and I'm Mike Bettis. I'm Alex Wilson. We're still cool. We're, and we have nothing to talk about. You know, usually oh, no. you default to like, talking about the weather, but these guys are able to go like, oh, what'd you do today? Well, oh, I went, went to space. Take a look down at the earth and yeah. stuff. What'd you do? Yeah. Grocery store? Take a look <laughs> at what happened this morning. North of Philadelphia, a picture of that haze that said, what the heck is this? You're in luck. We're going to explain. And we even had that planned before my mom texted. So that just goes. We're on the same wavelength. Let's uh, take a look at the Philadelphia timing here moving through the remainder of this afternoon and evening. You can see fairly quiet until we head into the early morning hours. I think at that point we're watching for a few scattered thunderstorms, uh, particularly, say, between Philadelphia and up towards the Abington area. Now, on Wednesday, more thunderstorms rolling through. Some could bring that potential for really heavy rainfall. And remember, between Philly and Trenton last Last week, we had all those water problems. We'll, of course, uh, watch, but the good news is it does look like these storms should be moving, but you get a few rounds of heavy rain, and we know what that can do. Uh, by 6 o'clock on Wednesday, we've got the storms generally exiting the Philadelphia area, so I think the early part of the late-day drive is what's going to be affected. So if you're leaving work, say, between 3 and 5, that's the best chance of seeing some of those rainfall-induced slowdowns. Up towards the Albany area, where Mike mentioned things have been a little rough, we've got showers, thunderstorms, storms out there this evening, even into the 11 uh, midnight hour. So even once you're going to bed, some showers still out there. I think the most potent of storms would be earlier. Wednesday, lunchtime, still dry, but you can see some uh, showers showing up off to your west. And by late day drive time, that's when the thunderstorms roll through once again for the Capital District. Stick around through about 7, 8 o'clock before we finally uh, drop off that rainfall and storm activity. Get some more quiet time. How about New York City? Uh, tonight uh, through this evening, we are on the dry side. Spotty shower possible overnight. And then we watch during the day tomorrow, 11 o'clock in the morning. You can see those thunderstorms working through parts of Pennsylvania. Eventually, Jersey and for the New York City area, once again, looking at that late day drive time. Georgia this evening. Uh, flash flood watch is posted for parts of Georgia and also northern Alabama. A little bit of Tennessee included within that as it has been uh, very soggy. You walk outside, it just feels, I, I, I have to use the word that Mike hates, but it feels moist, right? You walk outside and you're just like, ugh, it just feels gross. Uh, you could wring out the air yourself. That's what we've got. And so that is helping to fuel some really heavy downpours when we do get the thunderstorms. And then, of course, the thunderstorms that have been causing problems for outdoor activities like the Atlanta Braves game yesterday. We've got thunderstorms across Florida and along the Gulf Coast. Not necessarily unusual for this time of year to have that soupy air, to have those thunderstorms. But, man, it is just we are stuck in a rut and can't seem to get ourselves out of it. Augusta, you've seen some passing thunderstorms. Orangeburg, you We've got some thunderstorms off to your west. Uh, have some have some activity uh, off to the southwest of Macon, east of Atlanta, along I-20. You are up against some heavy downpours that are going to slow down your travels. And then again, Birmingham area watching for some uh, at least moderate to even heavy downpours. The heavier downpours farther to the south and east of town. We've got this flash flood warning in effect for Shelby County, including the city of Wilsonville. A radar indicated flash flood warning. Uh, some thunderstorms working through the coast of Louisiana and then down into southern sections of Mississippi and Alabama. Scattered thunderstorms will leave you quickly drenched, but then moving on out and some peaks of sunshine return. Future radar through the remainder of today. We'll continue to watch next few hours, but once the sun goes down, we lose a lot of the activity. Tomorrow, more shower and thunderstorm chances as we get into the late morning and especially during the afternoon. Really heavy rainfall rates. Flash flooding, of course, uh, has been a concern and will continue to be an issue across some of these areas. Out here into Arizona, north of Yarnell, we've got a flash flood warning here in Yavapai County. Considerable threat tag on this one, so concerned about uh, flash flooding there. We got a lot of terrain across this part of the country. Up into portions of New Mexico, uh, or Utah. We've got iron in Washington counties under a flash flood warning here. Also a considerable tag on this one uh, right between those two counties. Uh, this is well to the west of 15 uh, just over uh, the state line. Then we get you into the state of New Mexico. Here's Santa Fe County under a radar indicated flash flood warning. Also uh, this one crossing over 25. This one uh, has continued to bring rain showers or these storms have continued to bring rain showers to the same areas. 
So the area where the warning is getting more rainfall. So that could make things worse before they get better. We look at all the available moisture, particularly across parts of Arizona, up into uh, southern Nevada, southern sections of California. And so that has triggered plenty of thunderstorm development this afternoon across many of those areas. And we'll continue to watch those flash flood warnings and watch for more flash flood warnings moving forward. Rainfall to come over the next seven days could be picking up three to five inches here across eastern parts of Arizona. So uh, if we can keep that spread out, uh, we can manage it. But we got to watch for getting high amounts in short periods of time. But that bullseye right there across central and eastern Arizona into New Mexico, Mike, plenty of areas in that one to three inch range is in trouble, Alex. Coming up next on weather, we welcome you back into Weather Underground here on this Tuesday. Lots to talk about, including some big storms working through parts of the Northeast. Today. Yeah, we got a big squall line that's racing through the Northeast, just not coming over at Lake Ontario, going to hit us in upstate New York, a place like Syracuse. This may be as close to space as I ever get, but billionaire Jeff Bezos and three fellow passengers lifted off into space aboard his Blue Origin rocket this morning. That journey marks a giant step forward in commercial space travel. NBC's Jay Gray has the news. Well, coming up on weather under want to get you a look at our tropical update. Uh, still fairly quiet across parts of the Atlantic. Uh, we've got all that action uh, closer to the coast, but out over the Atlantic, no development expected. When I talk about the action closer to the coast, I mean the thunderstorms that we have. Uh, tropical depression, Felicia Guillermo. We were watching that yesterday. That is now a post-tropical cyclone. Uh, Felicia, it's headed that direction, so we're beginning to see the end of this one. Tropical depression with 35 mile an hour winds. That weakening trend will continue as the storms uh, or the storm continues its west southwestward motion. So uh, working its way farther uh, well to the south of Hawaii by Thursday morning, still around 30 mile an hour winds, but we'll be looking at this becoming a remnant low. Looking at the Atlantic side of the, the coin again, not expecting any development here within the next two, even the next five days. But when we look at the European model, we're going to be watching uh, some of those waves coming off a little area of spin there off of Cabo Verde. We'll watch this as we head into the late part of the week as it begins to approach the islands. But you can see it doesn't have this uh, developing into anything significant or really tight area of spin. Then as we get into next week, another area exiting uh, off of Africa. So again, this is that time of year, especially here as we head into the peak of the season that we watch those tropical waves. So here when we look at the GFS model, again, that first wave moving across uh, the Caribbean. This one keeps a little bit more of a confined area of spin, but as it makes its way closer to the islands, also by late week, not super defined, but again, as this works, into the leeward, the Windward Islands. We're going to be uh, keeping a close eye on that by the end of the week. And then again, next week, a GFS model also brings some areas of spin off the coast of Africa. So something to continue to monitor here as we get closer and closer to the month of August. Uh, we know that is uh, peak time, uh, August and September. July, we really watch anywhere for tropical development uh, close to home as well as out into the Atlantic.